Fixing the money thing. So we go back to the Old Testament and say, well, what was the Sabbath? Why was there a Sabbath? Because I believe there's a couple reasons. Number one, it was a promise to man, a picture to man of what one day God was going to restore and how life is supposed to look. Finished. Everything there you need. It's holy because it's finished. You follow that? God blessed it because it's complete. It's finished. Everything was there for man. And the Sabbath day was put in place, I believe, that so man would have a chance to see what life was like. It was a picture. It was a promise. It also stopped man from running nonstop in pursuit of just existence. It caused him to stop, acknowledge God, who was his life. Otherwise, things become his life. It just forced him to stop. But basically, it was a promise of what the essence would be later when Jesus Christ fulfilled the, the promise. The, the shadow of the Sabbath said, the law of the Sabbath, the outline of the Sabbath said, you can't work. Okay, the Old Testament law said, you can't work. What's the essence of it, though? The, the outline said you can't work. What's the essence? The essence is that there is now freedom from the earth curse system of the painful toil and sweat. There's another system. The seventh day has been restored back to man through Jesus Christ, and we can tap into the kingdom of God. We can find our purpose again through Jesus Christ and escape our survival mentality. In the Old Testament, amazingly, they had a Sabbath year. It means every seven years... They had one year called the Sabbath year where they could not law, the outline, the, 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 the kind of the, the outline of, of, that, of that year said a couple things. You can't labor or sweat for an entire year. No sewing. All debts are canceled. What is the essence of the Sabbath year? God is your source. Although it may seem impossible in the earth curse system to survive a whole year without labor, he's showing them there's another way of living. And in this way of living, debt is obsolete. You won't need debt because you're blessed. That's the essence of it. You with me? It's Deuteronomy chapter 15. My Bible says this in the heading, the year for canceling debts, the Sabbath year. At the end of every seven years, you must cancel debts. And this is how it's to be done, et cetera, et cetera. Verse 4 says this. Listen to this. It's amazing. Verse 4. However, we're going to cancel debts, but however, there should be no poor among you, for in the land the Lord your God is giving you to possess as your inheritance, he will richly bless you if you fully obey the Lord your God and are careful to do all he says. For the Lord your God will bless you as he's promised, and you will lend to many nations and borrow from none. Do you see that? It's the year of canceling debts. But he's saying, that's not what you're looking at. That's not what you're aiming at. Oh, I get to get my debts. No, you want to aim bigger than that. You want to be the lender, not the borrower. I want to bless you. Stop trying to survive and wait for the cancellation of debts. I've heard this people say this. You ever heard that? Well, cross the line here. I don't know. Someone will attach names to it. I don't know. You ever heard people say, I'm going to pray against the spirit of debt. I'm going, to, I'm going to pray for you that, you know, spirit of debt. Yeah, we're going to, we're going to break the spirit of debt. You know, we're going to cast it out of you or whatever. You know, you, you, know, you, you know how you deal with the spirit of debt? Pay it off. <laughs> You've heard that before. It's like, I get emails, people say, well, it was prophesied last night to me at church that I'm supposed to prosper. Duh, read the Bible. <laughs> there should be no poor in this room. Okay, that's Old Testament. That's Old Testament. And the Bible says there's a Sabbath rest for you, the church, in Hebrews chapter 4. There should be no poor in this room. Think different. Think bigger. Understand who's with you. Understand his wisdom his creativity. Think in terms of your life is amazing and God wants to do so many amazing things with your life that people stand back and they're the Potiphar's and they have to come and go, whoa, tell me what you do. The, I believe this. You know, I say this all the time. I try to pick a car that people probably don't have. Your rusted out 30-year-old Yugo is not going to testify of God's greatness. Now, you can start where you start. Please don't misunderstand. It's okay to start where you start at. If you have to walk, it's okay. But you have a promise and a destiny that does not end there. Okay? 
You have to know that. So they also had a, uh, a big deal, the year of Jubilee. That happened after seven Sabbath years. The 49th year was a Sabbath year, and the 50th year was the year of Jubilee. And so now they couldn't sow their crops for two years in a row and would have to wait to the harvest of the third year. That, in an earth curse running system, is you've crossed the line. If I said, okay, go home, none of you guys can work for three years, how many would be bankrupt? Shouldn't be. You know why? You should have enough saved up. You're blessed so much to, to extend and to survive that. That's what the Bible's saying. He is trying to show these guys there is a way to live above this earth curse system in the kingdom. It's a picture of Jesus Christ. But the year of Jubilee, the shadow said no sowing for two years and then wait for the third year to produce crops. Impossible in the natural. Not impossible with the kingdom. Paying your mortgage off, impossible, not with God. Stop saying impossible. The kingdom of God's with you. Joseph had Potiphar staring at him. Number two, what was prosperity in that day? Land. Land was prosperity. You could grow crops, raise animals, land. All the land was given back to the people. What was God saying? You have a future. You have you have a way to provide. You have a way for me to bless. You have a place I can bless you. You have, a, you have a way to prosper in life. All land goes back to the original owner. Number three, all, all, proper, all slaves are set free. We're not slaves anymore. We're sons and daughters. We have access to all the kingdom has in it. So we're not slaves. We don't live just to sow. We don't live for the debt to be canceled. We don't live. We are sons and daughters of the most high God. We are supposed to prosper in life. Well, how can they do that, Pastor? How can they survive two years without sowing? I'm glad you asked the question. And they asked Moses that question. So let's find out what he said in Leviticus chapter 25, verse number 20. You may ask, Moses says, how or what are we going to eat in the seventh year if we don't plant our crops? I will send you such a blessing in the sixth year that the land will yield enough for three years. While you plant during the eighth year, you'll eat from the old crop and you'll continue to eat from it until the harvest of the ninth year comes. So the sixth year tells you what? That's God's creation. That's God's finish. He's complete. The end of the sixth year, he has everything in place. The sixth year, God's creation, God's ability produces more than enough. You can't have a Sabbath rest without more than enough. You have to have more than enough to find your rest. How is the Sabbath rest possible? It's only possible if you have more than enough. A lot of Christians are happy their bills are paid. So the problem with just having your bills paid is tomorrow comes. Okay? So how can you have a Sabbath rest? Because if you don't have, a, if you don't have provision, you've got to work on that next day to provide for that day. So it's called the double portion. The double portion is more than enough. In Exodus chapter 16, we find this statement about the the manna that they were picking up off the ground, the Israelites. In Exodus chapter 16 and verse number 23. Let's go to, um, yeah, 2021. Each morning, everyone gathered as much as he needed. And when the sun grew hot, it melted away. On the sixth day, they gathered twice as much. Okay, you see that? They gathered twice as much on the sixth day. Why? Because the next day was a rest day, Sabbath day. And so the Lord commanded them to do this. And uh, so they saved it on the sixth day to the next day. And nevertheless, some of the people went out on the seventh day to gather it, but they found none. And the Lord said to Moses, how long will you refuse to keep my commands and my instructions? Bear in mind, he said, I have given you the Sabbath. That is why on the sixth day, he gives you twice the double portion. So Hebrews chapter 4 says there is a Sabbath rest for God's people, which infers that God is going to bless you with more than enough so you can rest. Except in our situation, it's not one day of the week, it's a kingdom. 
So it's not just the sixth day of the week. We live in the seventh day. In the kingdom of God, we live in the seventh day through Jesus Christ. The church has not been taught how to step into the double portion, how to step into the multiplied overflow. There can be no Sabbath rest without more than enough. The double portion is required. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.